so i saw a few interesting answers as well so as the discussion was going on so regarding well simulation uh, like sorry well stimulation then reserve simulation i guess if i'm not wrong so that was when i joined and i saw a few uh, like interesting answers as well then like you were discussing few other things so it's a good thing that you are discussing prior to the session so it's a good thing but then again uh, things i think it should be kept to the specific part of the topic right anyways so today uh, we'll be having an extended session because like yesterday as you know that means we missed out somehow due to some unforeseen events so today we shall be having uh, the coverage of uh, yesterday's session that is day trees whatever was supposed to be covered so that was the uh, drilling operations or the drilling uh, part of the oil and gas industry plus uh, the production concepts would be covered right and then tomorrow again we'll be having some multiple topics or let's say multiple domains of oil and gas industry that would be explored or let's say that would be brought to the limelight and on saturday we shall be concluding with the uh, remaining topics or let's say whatsoever might be left out right so starting with uh, the uh, like yesterday's topic what was supposed to be discussed so like uh, we would be discussing about the drilling operations yes uh, so <clears throat> when when it comes to drilling so i i see a lot many fascinating minds whenever we are talking about that what do you aspire to become let's say in the oil and gas industry so like uh, in out of a uh, lot many people who interact or so let's say who are being asked this very question so at the very beginning uh, we tend to see that many of them are fascinated towards the drilling sector because maybe uh, it, uh, since the drilling sites might be a common site yes or let's say whenever you're talking about oil and gas in a layman uh, terms or let's say uh, among a layman circle so mostly uh, people end up uh, understanding or concluding that drilling is the you know uh, it's the uh, for uh, means you know it's the front runner of the oil and gas industry but then again as we started enrolling ourselves or let's say as we started uh, diving deep into the oil and gas uh, industry uh, we came to know or let's say we have come across a lot many uh, professions yes or let's say a lot many options are there right so uh, what we know is uh, drilling is just one part or let's say it's just one component which is uh, adding or which is contributing towards the success of the oil and gas industry so normally in a drilling site you would be uh, getting to see or you would be experiencing a similar site as you can see in the picture here right so but depending upon the locations depending upon uh, the place or let's say depending upon the conditions wherever uh, the drilling site may established things uh, might vary a bit yes so maybe the drilling site which you see here uh, might not be the same or let's say means all the entire setup is same but let's say uh, the um, the impression which you see here yes like you have uh, some uh, forest covers you have some hills here so uh, we can assume that this is a pleasurable scene or let's say this is the site is very it's, it's a scenic one but maybe at times uh, when we are working in deserts let's say yes so people are working in deserts like uh, you talk about the middle eastern regions even in india as well we are having few sites uh, which are nearby the you know the uh, desert regions then uh, we are having people who are working in the offshore area so if when the offshore um, places are, are a bit different yes it's completely contrasting to what you see in the onshore cases so although the processes are same but then again uh, it is uh, what our eyes uh, perceives right so that's when you know uh, people they start getting offended or people they start having differences in the in, in you know in their in their opinions of working in a drilling site right but then again we are not here to discuss about the pros and cons of working in an onshore let's say working in an offshore site we are rather just here to uh, you know brush up or let's say just to you know come out with the understanding that what happens in the drilling sector so i think by now uh, we all know we have all realized that how come uh, oil and gas have formed right so oil and gas uh, the products or let's say the reserves uh, which are being utilized heavily which are being utilized uh, which have been exploited now these right so uh, those date dates back to you know lot many million years back yes so that's what we get to know yes and then what we are doing is uh, we are making a connection or let's say we are establishing one link uh, from the surface uh, to the uh, reservoirs or let's say to those pay zones or which are existing or which are in the subsurface uh, deep below right so that's what uh, the uh, drilling operations or the drilling uh, industry or the drilling sector offers us yes so it helps us establish the link uh, between the surface and the subsurface yes 
via the well which they are drilling and the well which we drill so it's a telescopic well yes yeah? so it's an inverted telescopic well that means as you go deeper and deeper then what happens is uh, the uh, diameter of the well it tends to decrease yes because as you go deeper and deeper uh, you need to maintain the uh, well bore integrity you need to maintain the pressure the temperature and also uh, as as fluids will start to come out right as fluids will start to enter into the well bore then again you have to maintain the stability of the well bore Yes. So with lot many uh, constraints in mind, uh, with uh, considering all those complications and the uh, scenarios that might be existing, because like no one can go uh, down and see that what's happening or what it is offering us at the subsurface, right? So all these things in uh, mind. So what we have is uh, we are having a, a well bore uh, whose diameter decreases as you go deeper and deeper, right? So. Uh, <clears throat> so there there would be different casings uh, that would be lower down. Yes, so there would be uh, different, uh, what to say, uh, there would be different uh, drill pipes also that might be used because we'd be encountering different uh, subsurface zones, right? So <clears throat> what happens is, so at the end what you get is, uh, you'd be getting one uh, inverted telescopic hole finally, right? So this is what happens. And then what we do is, in order to ensure that there are uh, there is a continuous flow, or let's say in order to ensure that means uh, all the fluids are you know directed uh, through uh, uniform medium so what you have is you have a tubing uh, through which the fluid is guided all the way to the surface right so then again uh, apart from this so tubings are also having other uses because at times when you are having multiple zones let's say you are having two zones so in such cases uh, from one zone the tubing uh, can have its uh, flow and from the other zone uh, the annulus would be having its uh, flow yes and when you're talking about the annulus so annulus is nothing but the free space or the existing space uh, uh, which uh, which is existing between the tubing and the casing that is the inner diameter of the casing that means if this is the casing now right and this would be your tubing. So this part uh, refers to the annulus, right? So when you're talking about the multiple zones, let's say, so uh, from uh, one zone, there would be uh, a flow of fluids to the tubing. And in the in case of the other zone, there will be flow of fluids to the annulus. So that's what I was referring to. Right. So uh, these things, I think we need not to uh, we need not emphasize again. I guess like how oil was formed. So we have already discussed it. I think twice, if I'm not wrong, on the first day and then again in the second day, right? So uh, this is the basis of the oil and gas industry. Without which uh, the oil and gas industry wouldn't have you know survived or wouldn't have you know even uh, they they wouldn't have uh, seen the uh, light of the day, right? So. <clears throat> So as you're going down, so you will be encountering with lot many uh, subsurface layers of formations. Yes. So it can be some basic sandstones. It can be shale rocks. It can be limestones, right? It can be some uh, thin, thin layers of coal as well, right? It can be some heterogeneous uh, uh, formations as well. That means uh, uh, sandstones mixed with shale formations, or let's say shales, which are in the sandstone formations, a lot many things. Yes. So apart from the sedimentary layers, you might be also coming across some ignitic layers as well. Yes. Like igneous rocks as well. They, they might be encountered as well. Yes. Depending upon the tectonic shifts, let's say. If not, then again, there would be other uh, rocks. That is the metamorphic rocks might be also encountered. Right. So through all these hardships, through all these different zones which are existing at the subsurface, what you do is finally we reach the target. Right. Finally, we reach the target. So that target or that depth, what we call it as, we call it as the uh, target depth. Yes. And then what we do is uh, we perforate the uh, tubings uh, and the casings. Uh, that's what I think uh, we all had discussed, I think, before we started this session for today. So while perforating, what happens is it establishes the link, or let's say it is the conduit uh, between the uh, fluids, that is oil and gas, yes, uh, with the surface. So through those perforated holes or through the perforations, what happens is oil and gas along with water maybe, so they would be entering into the well bore. And because of the pressure differential, what will happen is all this uh, accumulated fluid at the bottom hole would be traveling all the way to the surface, right? So that's what we are doing, as you can see here. So this is a typical drilling rig uh, setup, right? And then what you see is this is the uh, drill string, uh, I mean, the uh, drill string assembly. Yeah, so at, at the bottom, what you have is you have the drill bit, uh, which is helping us to uh, cut across, or let's say means move across different formations. And finally, what we do is we end up um, locating the pay zone, 
right uh, we end up uh, drilling all the way till the p zone and from that what happens is uh, oil will start uh, flowing into the well bore then from that what happens is after we have achieved the target then what happens is uh, it's the uh, production team that takes up the uh, matters into their hands right so the drilling team what happens is mostly let's say for uh, two to three months maybe they would be you know they would be stationed in one particular location and then what will happen is they would be moving to some another location right so like uh, as that happens then what will happen is uh, like mostly the number of wells would be increasing so that so that means uh, we are referring to the development phase now yeah so if you recall that what we had the exploration phase or uh, then we had the delineation we had the appraisal phase and we had finally development phase right so all these setups whatever you might be coming across whatever you might be seeing then this will be all uh, disassembled again yes this will be all you know uh, made into some uh, small small pieces and then uh, it would be mobilized it would be carried away to a different location right now uh, for uh, like means oh, which particular location or what would be the uh, perfect uh, you know uh, location or like, what would be the perfect look, uh, uh, scenario to uh, drill the well so we have also discussed that if you recall yeah so we were discussed so like we had three wells yes yeah? so a b and c if i'm not wrong so like uh, well a was uh, drilled to a particular depth then well b the same means it was drilled to a particular depth and well c was also drilled to a particular depth and depending upon that uh, we emphasize uh on which well it would be uh, much more preferable to continue with the production operations yes because as we start drilling and then when you finally encounter oil and gas now like i said that since the production team would be taking the matters into their hands so now what happens is we have to maintain the pressure depletion we have to maintain the uh, reservoir drive or the reservoir drive energy uh, which is the driving force for the fluids to flow all the way to the surface because now what we'll have is we'll be having the self flow of the well yes yeah? so we'll be having we'll be entertaining with the uh, flowing potential of the well yes so it is from that period what happens is uh, the uh, the cash flow started uh, starts to get generated yes so that's why drilling uh, operations are very much crucial so it's just like a gamble yes so in gamble what happens is let's say it's like a betting process in a way yes but then again uh, it's a much more safer betting process why because uh, we do have the informations now normally in betting what happens is you don't know uh, like yes at all till the time it's being rigged or let's say till the time uh, they are kind of uh, like match fixing or so so you don't know uh, what is going to be the outcome but in case of oil and gas uh, we do have the luxury of understanding that uh, what the subsurface is to offer but what happens is uh, in order to understand or let's say the interpretation plays a major role there yes because only when the interpretation or let's say the conclusion of all those studies and whatever data was uh, uh, like encountered or whatever data was you know recorded so while it uh, if it is encountered or it means while if it is interpreted in the appropriate manner only then uh, we would be having the fruitful results or else uh, what will happen is like billions of dollars or uh, whatever is invested for the drilling process when you will be encountering a dry hole so all the money that has been invested goes to waste so it's a zero outcome yes it's a zero outcome and that means let's say one billion dollars uh, has been invested so all this one dollar it goes into the simple well bore without having any returns yes but then again if you hit the oil or if you hit the target then definitely this 1 billion of investments definitely will give you some 10 billions of returns let's say right so with all the expenses or let's say with all the deductions then at least the company would be having profits right because till the time the company is able to sell its oil to the potential buyers so there will be a cash flow that would be coming to the companies yes so there would be a regular revenues that the company would be earning so that's why uh, it's a very calculated move and again uh, that's why uh, we we refer it to as a gambling business right so time and again so whenever in the oil and gas industry be it a government uh, psu be it uh, you know government back projects be it a joint venture be it a private uh, venture so at any point of time whenever there is you know implementations of operations uh, the economic analysis plays a major part yes because money is required for all those operations yes investment is required so what is the outcome so that is what is looked after yes so in here what we have is uh, we have the uh, techno economic analysis 
yeah so like technically how feasible is the project then even economically how feasible is the project that's what we keep in mind that's what we try to assess right so like why we are calling it as a techno economic analysis because technically it has to be viable because maybe uh, there, there is a discovery today yes uh, but uh, the existence of the oil and gas uh, accumulation there uh, it won't be that much suitable why because the current uh, tools or let's say the current uh, 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 engineering setup whatever the company is having so that won't be necessary means that won't suffice that that is not uh, that much appropriate in order to uh, go ahead with the drilling processes so maybe even though we are we are ignoring such kind of risks then what will happen is maybe tomorrow we might be coming across some incidents which might again you know jeopardize so let's say it will be hampering the entire operations that is that is one risk that is one aspect that are looking here then when it comes to the economic aspects let's say today the price of oil is too low that means the selling price of uh, the uh, the barrels of crude oil right so maybe if you are if you if you start producing from those reserves then definitely whatever money you might have invested let's say uh, like uh, 1 billion dollars so there might be returns but what will happen is the the profit margin let's say or the profit gap would be very much small it will be very much tiny so that again that won't suffice the needs of the companies yes so in lot many cases so at the end of, of this techno economic analysis what happens is either the projects are given you know a green signal or a go ahead or the projects are kept on hold yes so never a proposal is being rejected Yes, means rejected as in uh, it is again, uh, you know, it is, it, is, it is advised for some reviews again. Yes, so let's say reassessment is done. Yes, so we never drop down the plan. Why? Because uh, this oil and gas accumulations are very, you know, limited in number. So we, we can't afford or we can't at all think about, you know, uh, giving it away. Yes, if not today, then at least uh, two days, uh, means two days after today's date. So it might be beneficial. It might be a boon for the company right so that is the reason what happens is that many cases many fields even after you know discoveries uh, what will happen is wells might be, have been drilled yes but what happens is uh, the operations are slowed down yes the recovery is slowed down because as per the prevailing market conditions uh, it might not be feasible uh, to go out you know full-fledged commercial operations right right so before we start drilling, so lot many activities are involved in it. Yes, because uh, while drilling a field, what happens is so those fields or let's say those locations, uh, those have to be awarded to those particular companies. Yes, so that goes back to the uh, bidding rounds, whereby you will be having oil and gas blocks. So that would be listed into the public domain, so that would be listed, you know, for uh, public participation. Public as in like the companies will be participating definitely. So uh, in such cases, what will happen is a block would be uh, put on, uh, means in a way it would be a sale. Yes. So uh, it would be a bidding process whereby the companies would be providing, they would be submitting the bids. Yes. So bids as in, so they have to give their entire uh, goals or let's say entire game plans. So like how they are, they, they prepare or how they plan, uh, you know, uh, to get the oil and gas uh, from that particular blocks. Right. So based upon their uh, declarations or they based upon their informations or or whatever they have submitted the uh, their like, let's say the technical credentials or let's say the financial credentials. Yes. Or let's say the success stories. So then what will happen is uh, it will be put for assessments. It will be put for uh, scrutinies or let's say reviews. Right. And after that, what will happen is they might be or they might they may not be awarded the block. So once the block has been awarded to a particular company, it is only then the drilling process starts to uh, get, you know, the green signals. So that is again a different phase. So like that's uh, that, that that comes under the planning and the development phases. So that is way before we start uh, drilling even. Yes, then maybe uh, like uh, the bidding rounds might have taken place some 10 years back. So the even the exploration phase takes a longer time, right? Because it is only after exploration, uh, we somehow we, we convince ourselves that there might be some structures uh, which, you know, which are potential uh, for oil and gas accumulations. 
So when the exploration phase takes place, let's say for some uh, three to four years at least, let's say. Then uh, when we start drilling the first well, so after drilling the first well, then like then the analysis, let's say means uh, what would be the pressure responses, what what are the accumulations of fluids or indication of fluids. So it's a time-consuming process. So that is the reason uh, why I, I told at the very beginning that it's a, it's a gambling or let's say it's a, it's a bet it's it's like a, a betting process that the companies enter into. So that's why I think you don't see uh, many companies uh, which are, you know, which are into this drilling sector. Yes. Uh, so mostly you'll find companies in large numbers in the service providing sectors, let's say IT services or let's say uh, chemical supplies, let's say uh, men and machinery. Yes, uh, but, it, but, but when it comes to the hardcore drilling, uh, where a lot of money is uh, required for investment, in such cases, uh, you shall see only few players that are still, you know, holding grounds. Yes. Then again, you will be finding some smaller players who sticks to just only one site or let's say just only one small field. Yes, because that's what uh, the financial uh, credentials plays a major role there. Right. And then what happens is uh, accordingly, uh, as you can see here now, so there would be identification of drilling locations. Yes. So where the drill needs or where the well needs to be drilled. Then again, uh, what type of profile do it would be? Yes. So as you can see here now, so this is uh, this color codes indicates pressure now, right? So depending upon a uh, lot many uh, factors, depending upon lot many parameters, what we do is uh, we take into account that uh, what would be the potential or what would be the uh, viable drillable location. And then what happens is the drilling operation might commence. So at the very beginning, uh, so uh, whether to means in order to confirm or let's say in order to understand whether a particular location of that particular block or let's say of the field, whether it might be having, you know, indications of hydrocarbons. So what we do is uh, we, we drill a well. So, that, so that's why in, in the beginning, the, you know, the returns uh, would be nil. Yeah, so that means the company would be uh, investing money time after time, but there won't be returns until the time the company enters into development phase. That means in the commercial production phase. So, right. So, so, uh, so it starts with uh, the wildcat drilling processes. So, whereby uh, in, a, in a new field, let's say, or let's say in an unknown location, whereby there are no prior information, there are no prior data records uh, that are available. So, in such cases. Uh, it, it's it's a blind spot, let's say. Yes, uh, so it's a 50-50 chances that there might be indication, there might not be indications of hydrocarbons, right? So uh, after drilling that uh, particular well, which we call it as the wildcat well, so then what will happen is, uh, we will be taking in the pressure response. We'll be recording the pressure response. And then what we'll try to see is if, if there are any kinds of fluids, uh, let's say, uh, that might be indicated or that, or that might be coming in contact or that, may, that might be coming nearby the well board. Right. So once we get the indication that there might be hydrocarbons, because after drilling, what happens is uh, we move ahead with the logging operations. Yes, so that means what we try to do is we try to analyze or assess the petrophysical parameters of the formations. So in the logging process, then what will happen is uh, we'll be understanding what type of rocks has been encountered or what type of minerals are there or what type of fluids, if there are any. Yes, so after that, what, what will happen is uh, we might be, you know, gaining some confidence. And depending upon that, we will be going ahead with other uh, drilling locations. Because uh, after we have drilled in one location, so we can't ascertain the fact that up till which extension uh, these fluids might be uh, available. Yes. So what we do is uh, we have to ensure that what would be the uh, boundaries or let's say what would be the flow boundaries or what would be the extension or the limits of that particular field. So in such cases, we go ahead with the appraisal phase, whereby uh, we drill much more number of wells in order to establish the reservoir boundary, in order to establish the uh, flowing limits of that particular oil or gas field. Right. So that let's say there might be one well drilled here, another here, another here, another here. Right. So that is the appraisal phase. Fine. Then finally, what will happen is then we will start entering into the development phase because once we have drilled the appraisal wells, now what will happen is now we 
are pretty much sure that up till what is the uh, limit of that particular oil field or like uh, to what extent can you possibly you know encounter oil and gas after that what happens is we start filling up these locations with uh, many number of wells because uh, when you start drilling more and more number of wells it's only then you shall be having more and more recovery of oil and gas but then again uh, this number of wells uh, will definitely keep in account of the pressure depletion because as pressure depletes then what will happen is the recovery of the fluids that goes down yeah so initially the recovery of fluids might be high since uh, like you know it's very much new in production but as more and more number of wells are being drilled the uh, recovery will come down yes so that that is one concerning uh, fact which the companies takes into account right so in many case what ha what happens is uh, many wells uh, have to be you know uh, they have to be shut down they have to be uh, kept in these certain conditions or let's say temporarily on hold yes because uh, we are shutting wells because we need to maintain the pressure Right. So that's when the well testing team or let's say the well testing operations, you know, they come into effect. Yes, they come into the play. Right. So a lot many things. So that's why, uh, you know, uh, like it, it's all about management as well. Right? So that's why the reservoir engineering team, you know, they also have a crucial part after that. Yes. So each and every contribution, be it from the geosensors background, be it from the drilling team, be it from the production team, be it from the reservoir, be it from the well testing. So each and every uh, individual that is associated with the oil and gas industry, they have their own, uh, you know, uh, contributions uh, to be offered. Yes. And each of their contributions, you know, keeps uh, uh, they, they are of high value. They, they have a high regard in that. Right. Then later on, let's say means in, in the commercial phase, when you encounter a, a certain well, whereby, you know, after drilling, after achieving a certain target depth, you won't be able to have any hydrocarbons, which should be economically productive means, you know, productive, right? So like you have come across or let's say you have encountered oil and gas, uh, but what will happen is uh, you have not encountered in economically productible quantities. Yes, so that means uh, the cost which was involved in drilling that particular well, yes, and the cost which which can be expected by you know uh, selling or let's say by commercializing commercializing those oil and gas, so that won't be you know that won't be a physical a feasible outcome. So in such cases, we refer those wells as dry wells. Right. Then we have other wells that are sidetrack well, side wells. Let's say at times you have you have drilled one particular vertical well. Let's say here uh, some incidents have happened because of which uh, let's say some tools have uh, got stuck or let's say a part of the drill string assembly has got stuck. Right. So in such cases, what we'll do is although the uh, payzone is here, then what we'll do is we will be sidetracking it. Okay. So this is one of the. Uh, uh, reason why we're side tracking then another reason of side tracking can be because of controlling the blowouts yes so when blowouts occur in order to uh, you know bleed off the pressure in order to bring down the pressure then we, again we have side track wells because uh, the initial well uh, where the blowout has occurred so it is uncontrollable from here so what we try to do is we try to drill uh, another well from a distant location in order to access this particular well and then what we'll try to do is we'll try to kill the well uh, with the help of the kill fluid and so that is again a side track well that is being used yes and then we'll be having the relief wells now yes so the relief wells will be again so these are the wells which are being released relieved yes so these are being these are the wells which are referred to as the relief wells and the process uh, what you have seen here so this is the side tracking operations right then we have inject injection wells so this injection wells comes in the secondary recovery so in in the injection wells what happens is we need to inject fluids so you'll be having on injector well you'll be having on producer well so from the injectors there would be fluids or there would be substances uh, which will be pushing the uh, left out oil or the residual oil towards the producer and this uh, residual oil which is being displaced towards the producer they can be then recovered at the surface so that is why the injection wells or the injectors are being used so normally what happens is we convert the existing producers or let's say those wells which are not you know uh, maintaining or which are not you know uh, means uh, performing as per the standards yes so accordingly what happens is we convert those wells into the injection wells 
then horizontal wells from the name itself you can understand you can at least figure out that these are those wells uh, which are drilled horizontally so in such cases we have the directional drilling practices right so when we are drilling a well or let's say when a well is to be drilled so at the planning phase the profiles of the wells are again uh, kept into considerations so uh, we have uh, like three profiles so one is the l shape profile or one is the j shape profile and then what you have is one is the s shape profile so let's say in case of the s shape profile you will be having one vertical section then there will be a, a directional section then again there will be a drop off section Yes, there will be a build up and hold section and then this is the drop off section. So this is the S shape. In, 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 in certain cases, there will be a well, uh, which is, you know, uh, drilled for a very long period uh, vertically. And then finally, what you have is you have a debated section. Yes. And normally in cases, what you have is you'd be having a vertical section and then you'll be having a directional section. So these are a few of the typical uh, the directional drilling profiles that the oil and gas industry is maintaining. Yes, so that's what you see. Yesterday we discussed about this. Yes, if you uh, it means if if you're still uh, if you're having this in your minds. So yes, so the success of the drilling operations uh, will depend on where we are completing the well in the particular reservoir. Yes, so either uh, we end up being successful or we end up being what uh, contributing towards the depletion of the uh, reservoir drive energy, or let's say uh, contributing towards having a, a dry well. So, uh, if you if you look at this particular uh, flow chart, uh, means uh, after having provided the material, so I guess uh, it's been uh, going on. That means the materials have been provided. I guess so. Uh, this is a fill development process. So, like uh, this makes you understand that how drilling uh, wells and how the decision making processes or how the various uh, technical processes helps us to undergo or let's say helps us to un means achieve the uh, development phase. Right. So you just go to it, just go through it means once uh, you have uh, this uh, materials uh, in your hands. Yes. Yeah? So that so in that case, it will become much more clear for you to understand. Right. So this we have already covered, I guess, right? Now you see. So the reason why I was emphasizing on the facts that means uh, drilling uh, requires, you know, huge sums of money. So you can see that what is the cost uh, that is involved in it. So, but then again, this is a typical, you know, a deep water well uh, that uh, means uh, that you are seeing here. Yes. So you see that means uh, for the seismic activities uh, means, you know, some, you know, some 50 million dollars uh, are being required. And this is just a tentative range, however, all right. So this might vary depending upon the locations, depending upon the depth of the well depending upon the conditions uh, that the drilling company had to face right so you see that means uh, what is the contribution of investments uh, from the various operations that are involved you see so the like seismic activities that is the explosion activities then at the very beginning when you'll be having the uh, exploration wells then after that when you'll be having the appraisal wells Right. So you see the major part uh, comes when you are undergoing the development phase or the development uh, wells are being drilled, right? Then in order to establish, in order to, you know, establish the facilities or the various systems that would be, you know, uh, providing the services to those wells, that also requires a huge costs, right? So that is the reason why, you know, a lot many amount is required. Just hold on, I'm just getting back. Okay, all right. Now, then here, what you see here is, uh, so this is the time required. Yeah? So initially what you have seen is in the previous slide. Uh, so this was all about the costs. Here, what you see is the time that is required for each and every operations, yes. So like I said again, so this time which is being required, so this will depend upon the locations and the various uh, conditions and scenarios that the company might be encountering. Right, so just go through it. Means uh, so it is showing you the time in hours. If I'm not wrong, yes, it's showing the time in hours. So just pay a bit of attention towards the color codes. All right. So 
at times uh, if it is you know a bit confusing because almost similar colors are being used but then again the shades are different right so if you are not able to distinguish between the various colors so my suggestion would be that you take help from someone who is very good in colors that is one thing or else you know, what you can do is you can also find for yourself in google yeah so what what is what is the typical time that is required for a particular set of operations in drilling a well so that is also another you know suggestion that i'll i'll be providing yes and then when the profit starts coming up sorry okay 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 okay, okay. i think there might be an issue i guess wait just hold on i am stopping the screen sharing then again i'm getting back just hold on just hold on where did it go just give me a moment okay so here what you see is the cash flow so which i was telling you about right so you see that means uh, for the initial phases for let's say for the initial stages uh, the investments uh, which the companies are making yes so that won't be generating any kind of revenues or any kind of positive cash flows so till the time the companies or let's say the uh, industry enters into the commercial phase or let's say the development phase it's all the negative cash flows that the company has to bear with right so it is only after uh, you know uh, some amount of time or let's say it is only after the uh, development phase when the company enters into it it is only then the company starts having the positive cash flows right so there is a bit of patience that is required yes why why i'm saying a bit of patience because those companies are, have become used to such kind of situations yes so they have to invest you know a good amount of money it's only then they would be getting the returns or let's say the profits in tenfolds right so because then again what you have is uh, you'll be having the government taxations you'll be having the cost or let's say the expenses that needs to be you know uh, given to all the services that they, they have been taking right and from then what will happen is whatever amount is left or whatever sum of money is left yes so that has to be again go, um, it has to go towards the recovery of the initial investments as well right so as you can see here so this pink patch with uh, what you see here so this is indicating the uh, remaining amount or let's say the profits but then again from this remaining amount what the companies have to do is they have to recover the uh, initially invested amount as well yes so after that whatever remains uh, it stays as the profit for that company and from this profits then what will happen is this companies will start investing in some other projects or let's say in some similar projects right so that is how the company is maintaining its finances that is how it is maintaining its cash flows right so uh, if you have to talk about the drilling operations in specific roles then you see that means uh, you have a wide wide variety of options to enter into right so maybe from the operating company side maybe from the service company side if not from the operating or the service company side then it can be through the drilling contractor side as well right so for any particular uh, site or for any particular uh, well uh, so lot many elements associated with it yes so for this well to be drilled so this well can be either from the operating company right or it can be uh, from uh, for a company which uh, who has uh, been awarded a subcontract or which uh, who has been outsourced to carry out the drilling operations yes so in such cases what you have is you would be having the uh, companies which are specialized in drilling yes so those are referred to as the drilling contractors right so the drilling contractors would be having their own sets of employees they would be having their own sets of skill sets right so which would be employing or which would be providing the services and their expertise in drilling this particular well right now apart from this now what you'll be having is you'll be having the service providers or the service companies which will be providing us with the all the necessary means to carry out the operations let's say uh, the drilling tools let's say the chemicals that might be required let's say the specialized services let's say uh, the measurement while drilling services or logging while drilling services right or let's say any kind of let's say it can be the logging operations as well right so all those services would be offered by the service providers right so you see that so there is an integration or let's say there is a synergy between three components yes so that's why you can see the lot many uh, 
opportunities arise. So you can see that the geologists are also a part of it. Yes, because uh, they will be continuously monitoring what type of formations the drilling uh, operation is encountering, right? So based on which the logging team would be having a very good understanding, a clear understanding. So that's how uh, the different opportunities arise. Yeah? And then as you, you know, as you excel in your uh, profession, as you excel in your responsibilities, then definitely what will happen is uh, you will be going all the way up in the ladder. And then finally, uh, you will be landing into some senior jobs. Yes. Or let's say a very, you know, very high profile jobs as well. Like you have the drilling superintendents, right? Uh, you have the general managers. Or means you will be going into the managerial sites. Right. So you need not come to the fields, but then again, you need to have a variety of field knowledge in order to uh, have those um, responsibilities as a manager. Right. So in case of the drilling operations, you have again two parts or let's say two components. One is the manpower, that is the uh, people or the personnel uh, who, who need, means we need the hands, right? We need the hands on deck. Then what we have is we have the hardware systems, we have the machinery. So that's why men and machinery, M&M. &M. Right. So, and then again, in case of the manpower, we have again uh, two classification. That is one is one is the planning group, or let's say one is the planning team. That is the drilling engineering group, which will devise the plans that uh, how the well is to be drilled, up till which uh, location, or let's say up till which depth a particular operation is to be followed. Right. Then you have the rig, rig operations group. So these rig operation groups will be carrying out uh, all the operations uh, that are being, you know, suggested or that are being, you know, advised by the uh, drilling engineering group. Right. So in case of the rig operations, so what you shall be having is you shall be having uh, like uh, these people uh, who are working there. So tool pusher being at the top of the hierarchy in the rig operations uh, job and then just about being the entry level uh, people. Right. So now you can see that there are some nine opportunities that arises. Right. So depending upon the experiences, depending upon like uh, what value we can offer to the company or to the operations, you will be definitely getting the jobs and the opportunities. Yes. So this is one. On the other hand, you have the drilling engineering group. Like I said, that so they are the uh, planning group. So who plans uh, all the necessary uh, informations? Yes. All, all the necessary suggestions and the plans that needs to come up. So as you can see, that means up till which particular depth, a particular casing has to be lowered or let's say a particular drill bit size has to be maintained. Yes, what would be the profile at what particular depth the profile has to change. So all those things are being designed or are being devised by the drilling engineering group. And those plans are being followed by the rig operations group actually, right? Now, okay. Okay, now we come to the uh, production engineering side. So when it comes to the production operation, so once the drilling is done and con is concluded, so then what happens is the production team or the production operations team, uh, they have their role to play. So when it comes to production, so uh, it deals with the recovery and the initial separation of the fluids because we have a multiple, uh, we have a multi-phase fluid that has been recovered. And only then what happens is when it comes to the surface, uh, what we do is we try to separating it into some individual uh, constituents. So gas, water, and oil. So that is what we are doing, yes. So with uh, water being the uh, useless component, even gas is also the same because like in order to find out the markets, in order to capture the market uh, for, you know, gas-driven fuels, you need to have a good production of gas. If not, then what will happen is you have to just flare it. You have to just burn it. So that means it is not left you know, um, harmful into the environment. It has to be, you know, let out into the environment in a harmless uh, composition. So uh, when it comes to again production or understanding of the well heads or let's say the various components that you can see at the well means top of the well bore. So these are the well heads. So these well heads are being installed or let's say they are being assembled. Yes. So to these well heads, so uh, what we do is we regulate the flow be it the recovery of fluids, be it the injection of fluids, or let's say the intervention processes later on, which we call it as the uh, work over operations. So what happens is uh, we have to intervene into the well. So like we need to go for uh, services, right? So well servicing. So in servicing, what happens is at times uh, the recovery or let's say the flow rate uh, goes down. Right. So in order to improve this flow rate or let's say in order to uh, improve the recovery of the fluid. So what we do is we have to go ahead with certain kind of uh, cleanup processes. 
Yes. So there might be waxes that might deposit that might impair the production. There might be deposit of solids. Yes. There might be sands that might be, you know, plugging these perforations. Right. Uh, there might be water that is being held up in the well board because of which, you know, fluids are not uh, other fluids are not able to come out. So all these elements. So what they do is they impair the production. Yes, they bring down the production. So that is what we have to again restore. Yes. So for such kind of activities, we need to intervene. We need to send some specific tools into the well board. So that is the well intervention uh, operations that again the production team looks into. Yes. So here, what you see is a typical wellhead. So this wellhead is nothing but it's a combination of valves, combination of gauges. Yes. Why? Because uh, valves are used to regulate the flow and these gauges, which you see these pressure gauges. So these pressure gauges helps us to understand what is the pressure that is being experienced from a, at a particular point. Yes. Because as you'd be lowering down different casings, so this casing would be uh, experiencing different pressures. Yes. So even the casing is having a specific policy or let's say a specific sequence. So all those casings, whatever uh, uh, pressure or let's say whatever uh, ex means experience it might be having. So those would be understand from these pressure gauges because these uh, casings might also fail. Yes, the well might collapse, the casings might fail. So there might be a lot many scenarios uh, by which the entire operations, you know, they, they might come to a stop or even it can compromise the uh, health and uh, property of the entire company. Right? So like we have seen in case of the deep water horizons or some other incidents as well that has been happening lately. Right? So we, means some unimaginable things can happen actually so you just can't be sure that what will happen so uh, because at the end it's an occupational hazard that takes place right so all these things are necessary to understand because it's an indirect process that we're dealing with yes because the fluids which are flowing we can only understand that these uh, fluids are full, uh, flowing because of the responses that we get to see in the pressure gauges let's say right So, uh, so these are the different casings, as you can see here, based on which each and every casing would be connected to a, a casing head, uh, which are part of the well heads. And finally, at the top, what we'll have is we shall be having the Christmas tree or let's say the Xmas tree. So the Christmas tree is again having similar valves, uh, similar pressure gauge uh, means combinations based on which uh, either the recovery of the fluid can be uh, continued or let's say injection of uh, some fluids or let's say kill fluids can be initiated or it can be also used up for the well intervention activities okay. uh, so to understand the role of the production engineer so i think by now it is very much clear right so what we have to do is being a production engineer we have to ensure that the uh, productivity of the well boy is maintained yes the efficiency of the well boy is maintained yes so for that uh, we have to keep a close watch we have to you know monitor the well uh, regularly continuously yes because all those data when it is being recorded and you know it is fed into the database or let's say into the system only then uh, one can understand uh, how a particular well is uh, behaving or how it is responding towards the uh, expected recovery right so again the production team or let's say the production engineer will also look into the various tools various uh, machineries or various parts uh, that has to be fitted in the wellheads that has to be you know that can be uh, used uh, for the recovery so even that is also one of the major aspect that the production engineer has to look into right so uh, if you have to conclude the responsibilities of the production engineer so this is what you get to uh, realize yes so you have to understand how the petroleum system works or let's say how the uh, typical production system works in fact not the petroleum system but in case of the production engineer's profile it would be the production system right then you have to have a very good idea a very sound knowledge of the various scenarios you know that might uh, that might hamper or let's say that might influence the production scenarios yes what would be the uh, potential uh, problems that the well might encounter yes then accordingly what would be the remedial actions that can be taken yes and finally uh, whether you would be able to ensure uh, you know a good productivity and a longevity in the production yes because a well might be having n number of wells out of those n number of wells if there are you know few wells uh, who are losing out or who are getting impaired then definitely that will you know uh, 
uh, implicate you know a, a decrease in the overall production so that is why you have to maintain all the wells under you know under a very uh, clean condition that means in a running condition that means the recovery has to be ensured after let's say the fluids have come to the surface and then we have initially separated into its uh, individual phases then what Yes. So then what happens is we have to uh, put them into the transportation uh, mediums. Yes. Uh, but then again, before putting it in transportation mediums, we also have the storage uh, mediums as well. So that's where the midstream sector comes into play. Right. So like uh, it's not it's not feasible. That means uh, whenever the oil, whenever the oil is being recovered and then separated, so we can straight away put into I mean transportation phase. No, it, it doesn't happen that way. So we have the central tank farms. We have these storage tanks. So where we collect the oil, and then maybe at the end of the day, or let's say at the end of a particular limit, then what happens is those stored or let's, let, uh, those collected oil will be then uh, put into the transportation uh, mediums. So it can be the pipelines, or let's say it can be the uh, railways, it can be the tankers as well. That means the crude oil carriers to the offshore areas, right? Or it can be also the uh, it can be also the tank trucks yes it can be also the tank trucks so through that what will happen is the oil would be readily transported into the refinery terminal so wherever it will be undergoing its subsequent distillation processes or the refining processes in cases of the natural gases uh, what the companies are recovering or what the company ends up recovering so for the natural gases there are two options uh, either they find out uh, potential buyers uh, so that the gas which is being found can be readily used as an energy source or the company what they do is instead of finding some potential buyers they can readily use the uh, gases in their own operations okay so there there are some gas driven turbines right which at the end might generate electricity right so nowadays we have the uh, cng vehicles that are coming up right so either that can be one option or let's say the companies are using it into its own operations let's say so that's a circular operation that is going on that's a circular economy that is being maintained yes if not then what they have to do is because like if there is no potential buyers in the market so they have to let it go yes they have to uh, let it out so what they can do is they have to flare it they have to burn it so that all the harmful all the harmful components of that particular natural gas so that will be burned that will be broken down into simpler and you know comparatively harmless constituents and then it can be uh, left out into the atmosphere that is one thing or it can be also used for injection purposes as well but for gas injection purposes you know a huge uh, you know amounts or let's say huge volumes of gases is required because when we are injecting gases we compress those gases right so you know that when gases are compressed so how small the gases becomes yes so that's why uh, you need a good volume of gas a good amount of gas to be collected on a daily basis so that it can be used for injection purpose as well apart from that the water which is left out the water has to be disposed into the subsurface again because that water can't be used for any kind of purposes except for disposing or let's say discharging it into the uh, subsurface back or uh, means back to uh, from where it came yes in a way in a way uh, that is what we have to do apart from that we have no other options apart from mm, uh, that particular uh, disposing option in case of offshore activities so uh, there would be offshore platforms uh, uh, where what will happen is uh, there will be multiple wells in the sea floor yes in the oceanic floor and these multiple wells would be connected to some dedicated platforms and from those dedicated platforms what will happen is uh, the oil which is being collected which is being processed right they will be you know fed or they will be loaded into these oil tankers and once it is being loaded into the oil tankers then what will happen is it will be going towards the uh, show onshore terminals yes so and from the onshore terminals it will be then sent uh, via the pipelines and then uh, the normal operations or uh, means the regular operations uh, takes place yes. so in case of offshore what happens is because of the limitation of the space you know there is a um, 
you know there, there is a congestion on the let's say uh, you won't be finding facilities or operations uh, like what you see in the onshore places right so so that's why in offshore uh, areas you you will be seeing that means there are a few term where there are a few platforms whereby you know the processing is happening so means there, there would be dedicated platforms whereby processing would take place there would be dedicated platforms where all the uh, recovery or let's say all the produced fluids will be directed towards and then it will be again subsequently directed to some other platforms accordingly to the need of the operations right and then uh, you shall be having different uh, platforms. You will be having different, you know, either it can be fixed platforms, it can be movable platforms. And then finally, what will happen is uh, it will be seeing the uh, shore activities, you'll be seeing the onshore activities. So now uh, this is the uh, this is what we had discussed at the very beginning if you recall right so at the end what happens is uh, means after a certain phase means when when there's a good amount of uh, oil and gas recovery then what will happen is uh, we will start having the decline phase so it is in this decline phase and what will happen is we will try uh, putting up some different recovery mechanisms by which you know this uh, economic limit which you see that is the abandonment phase this can be prolonged yes so and then finally what will happen is once uh, we finally conclude and let's say realize that means the well can no longer uh, recover or let's say the field can no longer provide us you know economic uh, means uh, reserves or let's say economic uh, production then what will happen is we will be closing down the facility right but then again this entire scenario which you see so this uh, goes uh, to some 15 to 20 years at least so there are few fields uh, which are also in some 40 years of production now right so this is not a very you know a very, this is not a very short term uh, process but rather this is a long term process but then again the more and more uh, means time you have for production the more and more beneficial it is for the companies Okay, so I think I have, you know, I have uh, concluded means much more uh, before in time, I guess, maybe.